factors. And one of the things that's really uh, struck me is the rate of change, and I've heard it here this morning, uh, David and Hayden talked about the rate of change within your business. But the fact is the rate of change of the world is like never before. We live in a very unique period of human history. In fact, since civilization, and I was at a, at a conference, uh, would have been six months ago now, there was a futurist. They've got these guys called futurists. You know, they can predict the future. They can tell us what's going to win the race at Randwick next week or Rose Hill, I like that. But it, this guy was saying that the rate of change since civilization has been fairly constant, it's been fairly linear. But what happened was when the world connected to the internet back in the early 90s or mid 90s, the rate of change just kicked up to an exponential growth. So nowadays we're living in a world that's changing faster and faster and we've got to get used to it, simple as that. But the fact is that this change ain't going to stop. And this guy said in this 100 year period that we're living in, this 100 year period we're living in, there's going to be more change in this 100 years than there's been in the past 20,000 years. And what do we get bogged down by? Well, what, you know, why do so many of us sell ourselves short? Why do so many of us limit our aspirations? Why do so many of us quit too soon? Why do so many of us let our dreams fade? I know the answer to that because I've been there. There's a thing that I term mind viruses. But what are some of the lies that you're telling yourself at this point in your life? Because unless you are living the ideal life where you are feeling a sense of oneness with yourself, my bet is that, that, that there's some mind viruses that are chewing away at you and really holding you back. And I know we all experience this. It's work-life balance, they call it. That's what they call it, right? And it so often should be called work-life work imbalance. And the big issue is, for all of us, and Stephen Covey, I think, has the best example of explaining this. We've got a bucket. This bucket represents our life. Right? In this bucket, we've got big rocks, we've got gravel, we've got sand. If we put the gravel in there first, which is the smaller stuff, or the sand in there first, fill it up with that, we ain't going to fit the big rocks in there. But if we put the big rocks in first pour the gravel in, shake the gravel around, it'll fit down between the rocks, then put the sand in and shake it around. We can fit it all in. But we've got to get the big rocks in first. My big rocks weren't in place. Are your big rocks in place? Because if they're not, your gut is going to tell you that it's not. But have you got the balls, if you're a bloke anyway, <laughs> have you got the courage to sort of say, no, I'm actually going to, going to, 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 to go in a different direction? Because we are creatures of habit. 95 to 97% of what we do every day is non-conscious. We don't think about it. You get in the car to go to work, you don't think about hitting the accelerator, the brake, the indicator. It's all non-conscious. So much of what we do every day is non-conscious. Which is good because if we had to think about everything, we'd be information overload throughout every day. But if we base our non-conscious uh, habits on these non non-conscious fallacies, and stuff that we tell ourselves that is a virus and not true, that's when we get caught out. It's when we get caught out. We need to develop this antivirus software which comes through understanding techniques, strategic thinking, and goal setting is, is, is one key point. Okay? Visualization. We actually communicate with an unconscious brain through imagery. Through imagery. So start to dream and become, because what you imagine starts to be, help you shift the way you see yourself. If you see yourself as someone who is, is a battler, you would never exceed that self-image because of the concept of incongruence. The non-conscious brain, which rules, rules most of what we, we do every day, 95 97%, if it sees me as being someone who's obese, I can lose all this weight in the short term because that's my willpower, that's my conscious brain, but it's going to go back on when, over time, when I lose that focus because my non-conscious brain doesn't see me that way. 